my earrings. Look. It was everybody's January. I know that shit felt long as fuck, but you know, February is finally here and let's do a February reset because there's still many months left of the year. And February is a leap month. It's leap year. Yeah. We have an extra day in February to get our shit together. We only have maybe like two more months until spring. And I think like the groundhog did not see a shadow. Yeah. So we will definitely have an early spring if it's right. But first, cheers. Welcome back, it's Taimi, your productivity and self-improvement bestie. Maybe just call me a big sis, whatever, works for you. I know winter time is a time where we just want to cozy up and do nothing, but we already had that moment, alright? The holidays are over, January is over, it's gonna be spring, and there's still a lot of things I feel like we have to do if we want to set ourselves up for the rest of the year, especially the warmer season. Here are some things to help you get your shit together in the month of February. Time to exit your lazy girl era and be more productive, okay? Now is the time to get up and keep going. I don't know how you guys are. How are your goals? Did y'all reach your goals? Did you guys start your goals? Your January New Year resolutions? Yes, no, maybe? We're gonna just assume yes and then you kind of stopped. Well, no, we're gonna pick it right back up, all right? First things first, set your goals. I know I said this already, but I'm gonna say it again. And if you didn't do your goals, like it's okay, you know? We're only human, life happens. It's hard to build habits, but that's what I'm here for, to help you, okay? So anyway, so first things first, set your goals. I'm gonna use these examples because they're my goals. So. Setting your goals is one thing, but you have to build systems on how to get there. Let's say like for me, fitness, right? I want to lose like 10 pounds. Just an example. I do want to lose 10 pounds though. So how, how am I going to get there? Of course, I need to meal prep. I need to be more aware of what I'm eating. Like for me personally, I am not crazy about tracking my macros like I used to. I feel like that really messes with my head. So I just try to make healthier decisions. But hey, if you want to cut, you want to track, by all means. Do, do you, do what works best for you. But my point is, set your goals and how are you gonna get there? So if you wanna lose weight, go to the gym, work on your nutrition, be disciplined, stay consistent, okay? Another one, content creation for me. I want to hit like a certain number of goals or, I feel like content creation is a little hard, but in order for me to succeed in content creation, what do I need to do? I can't just post like once a week or once a month, like I have to be consistent. So my plans are pretty much like I, film every week for my youtube videos i try to post four to five times a week for short form tiktok instagram and youtube shorts i say short form for all of them four to five times a week and that works for me once a day if you can do more if you're an aspiring content creator you could do way more than that oh, shit by all means all right the next thing it's pretty much i don't know about you but i'm at the age where sleep is important what i eat is important how I take care of my body is important. Basically, having a routine is important. I am not 21 anymore where I can just drink and party all night and just wake up the next day and be a superwoman and do everything. No. I think that stopped when I was like 25. Once my prefrontal cortex started developing, all that went down the drain. My back started hurting. My knees started cracking. I'm starting to hurt in places I didn't know could hurt. Pretty much, have a routine. Get 7 to 8 hours of sleep per night. And no, sleeping... From 2 to 10 is not the same as sleeping from 11 to 7. Just saying, okay? So don't try to get away with sleeping late. Like, oh, I'm sleeping 8 hours, but not like in the time frame, okay? So sleep, sleep early. I sleep at like 12. I think that's pretty good. So sleep early. You truly are what you eat. And I'm not saying to make yourself miserable and just eat salads. Do what works for you. But definitely make healthier choices. It's kind of tough in this kind of economy and capitalism where everything is just GMO. But you, 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 you get my point, right? <laughs> and exercising, my metabolism is starting to slow down a little bit. Gotta keep going. Gotta keep running. <sighs> Gotta keep running. I hate running. I, I pretty much just walk 10k, 10, 10k steps a day. That's what I try to do. But yes, having a routine is important because it sets you up for success, in my opinion. It's just easier to get things done when you have a routine do you have to stick to this routine i mean live your life a little bit you know if you go out here and there that's fine just don't make going out your routine if that makes sense huh? 
since spring is coming obviously spring cleaning i really am not the one to say when my desk right my vanity right now is crazy i need to clean this but i bought stuff for my japan trip that's why it's so messy okay don't come for me don't come for me i'm trying girls trying life's hard so declutter your room i feel like once you declutter and clean it's just like it's like you're also mentally cleaning your brain i feel like your room or your space is a reflection of your mind <laughs> so definitely that would definitely help get you motivated to start doing what you need to do because your space is clean even making your bed. I make, I've been making my bed every day for like 10 years and I've never regretted it and I've got my friends to do it and it's so simple yet yeah, it makes such a big difference. No excuses. Alright, I feel like we're at the point in time where you don't really have an excuse to not get what you want because if you really wanted something, you will make it happen, right? Like when you go to school, you want to pass your exam, you'll study mad hard, right? Study mad hard, get to do your best and get good grades, right? apply that to your life why do we not do that we give up so easily i feel like i mean i can't speak for everyone but we tend to give up very quickly and i am definitely guilty of that so no more excuses just keep pushing sometimes we give up because we get really uncomfortable because we're doing things we have never done and because we've done things we've never done your brain is like danger danger even though it's good for you, your brain is not used to it, so try to bring you back into old routines. I get it. You have to sit in the, you have to learn to sit in the discomfort. It's really, really, really unpleasant. But you kind of get used to it, and then once you get used to it, it'll be all good. Take it for me. I had to sit, and I'm still sitting in discomfort when I film, when I make videos, when I edit, imposter journal syndrome. There's so many things that I feel when I make content, but I'm not giving up because this is my life, I want to make the best of it, you know? I know I said having a routine, and if you have like calendars or like you use Google calendars and you really plan out, map out your day, that is great. But if you don't, doing that helps. But I want to say have a true reset day. Like a day where you do nothing. Nothing, you just lay around. To order takeout, you know, watch TV, scroll on your phone, read a book, go for a walk if, you're, if it's not cold outside. Oh, but what about my chores? I need, I have responsibilities. We all do. So I would suggest throughout the whole week, you do all your chores during the week. Like you have laundry, you do laundry on an off day that week. If you want to clean, you clean on another off day that week. Like Sunday is usually my chore day. So if I with me, I would probably do all my laundry during the week, clean during the week, put everything away during the week. Everything I need to do that Sunday, I would do during the week. So when Sunday comes, I can just and not feel guilty because I do feel guilty taking a break and that's like a really hard habit I'm trying to break but anyway yes so you won't feel bad and you and everything is done already so you could just truly rest in peace that sounded really grim <laughs> next surround yourself with like-minded people I feel like a lot of people don't realize that you are who you surround yourself with if you're always with people who are partying, you're gonna be partying too. If you're always with people who are drinking, you're gonna be drinking too. If you're always gonna be around gym friends, they're gonna wanna bring you to the gym with them, right? If you if you are in a book club, obviously you're gonna read with your book club, right? So think about it. You have to look at the people that you surround yourself with and see how they elevate you. And I'm not, I'm not like this is not about friendships. This is not about like cutting people off. This is not what this is about this is seriously like surrounding yourself with people who have the same vision as you if you want to excel if you want to sit in discomfort if you want to get comfortable with being uncomfortable if you want to expand yourself you have to surround yourself with people who want to do the same thing because if you want to change and you want to grow but you surround yourself with people who just complain all the time and do nothing about it it's honestly not going to help you you probably could like ignore it but it, it won't elevate you you won't grow from it you won't learn anything like you you're just gonna be doing it on your own so surrounding yourself with like-minded people really definitely does help i wish i had more content creator friends but i'm the only one doing this so i'm on my own here <laughs> but you know what i'm saying so if you have fitness go make make some friends at the gym if you want to make more money go meet some entrepreneurs you catch my drift you know what i'm saying now i'm not saying like i don't complain i'm not trying to shit on people who complain i'm just just trying to say 
how will you get stuff done if you're surrounding yourself with people who don't want to get stuff done? They might un un unintentionally keep you at the same place without you even realizing. I am also very guilty of this. Getting to know yourself. Let me ask you this. How well do you think you know yourself? Oh, I'm gonna let you answer that. Like seriously, think about it. Do you know yourself well? Maybe you do, or maybe you don't. Let me tell you. I didn't learn about myself until I was like 28 years old. I thought I knew who I was, but I definitely did not know who the hell I was. So my next piece of advice is to take yourself out, get to know yourself, spend some time alone. Because if you, I'm very extroverted when I want to be, and I definitely like to surround myself with my partner or like my friends, but you truly cannot know yourself unless, until you're by yourself, until you sit with yourself, with your own thoughts, with your own habits, with your mind. Like, you don't know who you are until you can sit with yourself quietly. With no external influences telling you who you are, who you should be, what you should do, all those things. You have to sit with yourself and then get to know yourself. Like, what kind of person are you? Do you like the things you do? What can you do to change? What, what habits can you do to be the person you want to be? Do you like who you surround yourself with? Do you like your job? Do you like your circumstances? You know, just just get to know like you and your life. Have you been doing things because society told you you should work a nine to five after getting a college degree or is it what you truly want to do? You have to ask yourself these questions. You have to get to know yourself so you can make the necessary changes to get the life you want. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I believe that being self-aware it's a very important trait to have. I feel like a lot of people are not emotionally intelligent or truly self-aware of themselves and the people around them and how everything externally could be affecting them or influencing them in their decisions more than they think. And I definitely was a victim of this because I had like childhood trauma, all that stuff, right? So I was like a big people pleaser. So I looked for people's validation to make me feel better and like i would cling on to people like it was like it was a hot mess but now i'm like i broke free of most of those things and now i really like am so in touch with myself I'm like wow i really like the kind of person i am and who i'm becoming and my last piece of advice is change the way you talk to yourself change the way you talk about things and what do i mean by that so when you are sitting and you're like oh my god i'm fat oh my god do i look fat Oh my god, was I weird? Like, change how you talk to yourself in your head. Because most of the time, like, that's how you were spoken to as a child. And it's like rewired into your brain. And you think you're talking to yourself like that. But it's not, it's not you. Like, the biggest thing for me was, like, my weight, right? When I look back on my old pictures, I was like 105 pounds or something. I'm like, wow, I was so skinny. Like, why did I think I was fat? But I realized, like, even, like, my family, you know, some Asian, right? I'm, I'm sure all the Asians would know. Like when you, your whole family is always like, oh, like, you look like you're gaining weight. Like you need to eat less, blah, blah, right? So when I was like 100 pounds, I was being told that. So it really messed with me for a very long time. So I always think like I'm fat or like have body dysmorphia. But now like I'm like telling myself like, no, I like, like when I think, when I think those things, I have to stop myself. I'm like, no, like, I'm not fat. Like that's just what I was told. Like you have to really check yourself. So it's like things like that. And then, change your perspective on things start being grateful start practicing mindfulness you know like i've had friends when they see someone else have nice things they'll just be like oh it must be nice it must be nice oh like what is that like like i wish i was rich like you have to stop saying those things and start really looking at yourself and appreciating all the things that you have once you enter a state of mindfulness and gratitude everything changes i promise i like promise promise ever since i started meditating and practicing mindfulness and like just tell myself like i'm so grateful like even though i'm not exactly 100 percent where i want to be in life i am definitely a lot further along than i've ever been like everything i have now i've always wanted when i was younger so you know you gotta give yourself a pat on your back sometimes not be so hard on yourself like I'm happy like my dog is still, he's like sleeping right now. I'm so happy like my dog is still around, like he's still kicking after like 10 years, you know, like it's truly the little things. So I hope you can take all these things with you and apply it to your life so you can get the things that you want. Change really doesn't have to be hard. Like what we think is hard is 
based on our definitions. Like my friend thinks getting 10k on TikTok is mad easy. I think it's mad hard. You know what I'm saying? Like it's all about perspective. So once you change the way you think, everything around you changes. So yeah, let me know if there's anything else that I may have missed or things that you're working on or anything else you want me to talk about and I will do it. I love you guys. See you next week. I'm gonna, oh yeah, right, I, I gotta do this.